Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, June 12th, 2021. The thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. This is my first video of the 2021 Atlantic hurricane season, so just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, first of all, I might sound a little bit different. I'm going to be playing with the audio setup as I'm living in a new location. I'm in Hawaii now, and on that note, it poses a few challenges, namely the time zone difference between myself and the eastern U.S. and the Caribbean and Central American time zone. And so getting videos out as I'm working a full-time job here uh, will be a little challenging, and I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to find the right time to do it so it's not in the middle of the night in the Atlantic time zone. Uh, but please bear with me. I can't necessarily guarantee that I'll be able to make videos as consistently as I would like to be able to. But I'm going to do my best, and I'm normally pretty good at uh, trying to get these out uh, when there's a storm threatening land areas, and I'll try to keep that up this year. Uh, but just an FYI that my schedule may change a little bit, and videos may come out at odd times once every so often. So with that, we're going to get started talking about our first legitimate tropical disturbance in the Atlantic since our first storm of the year, Tropical Storm Ana, that was subtropical for most of its life northeast of Bermuda, but did not form in the deep tropics. This is really the first uh, one that's coming out of the low latitudes here. Invest 92L, it has been labeled. And this is an area that's kind of coming up across Mexico as we have an upper level trough over here that's kind of funneling deep tropical moisture and the monsoon gyre uh, vorticity or spin up into the Bay of Campeche area. So we're getting this broad rotation elongated with uh, deep moisture and thunderstorms breaking out here. And if we look at a recent ASCAT pass, that went through here a few hours before this recording. You'll see a little bit of rotation here, east-southeast wind on the north side, very light westerly wind along the coast, southern coast of the Gulf of Mexico, and this kind of trough axis in through here. Nothing super consolidated, so while we do have rotation and a circulation here, it is very elongated in this direction. And so this is not showing imminent development. And at the moment, we have some southwesterly wind coming across a loft that we can see in water vapor imagery coming around the front side of this trough, and that's imparting a little bit of shear. So we have the low-level elongated circulation in here, and then all the clouds are on the north side of that. So right now, there's some shear. This upper trough will be backing away over the next day or two, and that should alleviate at least some of the shear, though we are likely to see at least some westerly flow pretty far south over the Gulf of Mexico as we have some deep layer flow coming offshore of the North Gulf Coast that's kind of keeping everything penned up down here. And this is going to keep this disturbance pretty far south in the Bay of Campeche for at least the weekend and the first part of next week, if not longer. And if anything does try to develop here in the next few days, it could even get pretty close to the coast here and maybe even move inland at some point. Uh, but it depends on exactly where the circulation consolidates, as right now it's over a broad region. And whenever that's the case, you're never quite sure exactly where in that zone it's going to try to spin up and tighten up if it uh, begins to develop and intensify further. If we look at the GFS Ensemble upper level wind flow, I'll go back to the beginning here. This is the current setup. We can see that upper level low that we outlined over Mexico that's going to be backing westward over the next little while. Our disturbance is in here, 92L. So you can see the upper level flow out of the southwest above it, imparting some of that shear. And the general pattern consists of a building ridge over the Rockies and into the uh, central U.S. And this is bringing down some offshore flow. This extends down into the mid-levels as well. And as I go forward, you'll see this ridge really start pumping over the Rockies. And so we're going to continue getting this kind of pressure offshore, kind of penning everything up down here in the Bay of Campeche. You'll see that upper low it does back away and we get a little bit of a pocket of lighter shear here. And so there is a small window where this could try to develop uh, as we get into Sunday and Monday, if it's still offshore and something begins to uh, tighten up in here, we could see a tropical depression or storm form down there. That is a possibility. But as we continue forward into the week, uh, we'll see that again, this ridge just continues to amplify tremendously. And by the time we get out into Tuesday and Wednesday, this starts to become a little bit more of an anti-cyclonic wave break type of pattern where the flow kind of loops backward toward the west a little bit here and then you outline this trough downstream of the ridge so you get your big uh, high here and then a little bit of low pressure developing here aloft now our disturbance is kind of trapped down here very strong westerly flow uh, coming down all the way into the Bay of Campeche area. This is a very suppressive pattern. Lots of dry air will be here to the north. Lots of shear down here, not a lot of breathing room for the disturbance. So by the time we get to midweek next week, its first window for development may come to a close. It may even get forced 
farther south over Mexico and potentially move inland. And uh, we'll see exactly how that evolves. Hard to tell right now, given how broad and elongated it is. But this is a pretty suppressive look to the pattern. There is a chapter two, though. And when we get beyond Wednesday and start to go forward into Thursday and then Friday, this trough will begin to reorient and kind of back away into northern Mexico and you start to change the flow out of the northwest to more of the southwest again and this starts to revive the area of breathing room that can start to funnel moisture northward and even though there's likely to still be shear in this kind of situation whatever is sitting down here whatever kind of area of messy weather could start to gain latitude and start moving north more into the northern half of the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, we'll start to see that area of lighter shear expand as this upper ridge redevelops over the Yucatan Peninsula in the Ensemble Mean by next Saturday. So we are talking pretty far out, about a week, but this is about the time when things could start to change down there. Uh, this is the, the look of the Ensemble members showing. Each red number here indicates where a storm is basically shown in the Ensemble. This is out to next Wednesday. You can see how far south it still is. So, you know, today's Saturday, next Wednesday, we're still talking about it being down there. And then as we go forward into Thursday and Friday, we'll start to see this indication that something could try to come up toward the north, closer to the North Gulf Coast, by the time we approach next weekend, so about six or seven days from now. We'll see if that actually happens. Details are going to be really fuzzy on this because a lot could happen in here during the next four or five days, and depending on how that goes, that's what will determine what happens by the time we get here. But models are suggesting that maybe some messy, disturbed weather subtropical or tropical in nature, hard to tell, may start to move north in the latter part of next week. And we can see this on the European model as well. This is out to next Friday. I can go back a couple of days here and you'll see how it stays bottled up. This is uh, Sunday morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, still just kind of sitting in here, broad rotation, not really a storm there. And then Thursday, Friday, we start to see a slightly stronger cyclone, but very broad and messy developing here. And this is the kind of situation where typical of many early season developments you might have you know a lot of wet weather on the west side maybe the north side too there might be you know a dry slot coming into the storm it might look pretty subtropical with this kind of uh with this kind of setup but it's it's hard to say six or seven days out maybe it comes north uh we'll have to watch but right now still pretty far out uh, no imminent concern for the united states through the next five days uh, but we are going to be watching how persistent this is and the potential for heavy rain and flooding in parts of the yucatan peninsula northern mexico you know that coastline around the southern gulf of mexico uh, could receive a lot of heavy rain over the coming days so that's the primary concern and threat going forward and once we get past the weekend we might have some more details about what if anything might try to come north here toward the north gulf coast and become a possible impact to the united states in terms of wet weather and uh, higher winds and things like that just no details as of yet we'll keep an eye on this pretty broad and messy right now possible development during the next couple of days down here and then uh, really not expected to move north until the latter part of next week that's it for now thanks for watching